Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 5. In this video I'll be looking at some of the popular picks within the FPL for this game week and suggesting whether I think it's worth having them or not. If you only choose from these players I think you've got a reasonable chance of finishing in the top 5% globally which means you'll do all right in your mini leagues. You won't win the whole global competition but I think you'll do all right. Now there's a lot of talk each week about, oh, this is a good player to get, that's a good player to get, if you look at the wider community. And I reckon maybe about a third of the players that get suggested each week end up being good picks and the rest just get forgotten about. So for example, this week there's a lot of talk about Vardy and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Neither of them are in this video because they're not high enough owned yet. There's a reasonable chance they're both blank the next couple of weeks and they won't get mentioned again. On the other hand, Maybe one of them will be really good. But if you, I'm not suggesting you'll be bothered to do this, but if you go back and watch content creators' videos from two, three weeks ago, see who they're all raving about, the chances are the vast majority of the players they're all excited about, you need to get this player in, come to nothing. So the safe option is you just need to think which players are going to hurt me if I don't have, which are popular players, and you just got to choose popular players. And I'm hopefully going to help you to choose the right popular players. <laughs> hopefully that made sense. All right, let's get going. So we start by looking at how the players did in game week four. And then we look at what I think are the various players for game week five and beyond. So Raya got nine points. Martinez got six. The rest got nothing. For the expensive defenders, Gabriel 15, White and Sleeper six and five. The rest nothing. For the cheaper defenders, none of them managed to get anything at all. For the expensive midfielders, Saka 7, Fernandez 5, the rest nothing. The mid-price midfielders, Bowen 5, the rest nothing. And then the cheapest midfielders, Smithrow 7 and Kunku 7, Garnacho 6, and the rest nothing. It was a low-scoring week globally. So if you got 40 points, that's not too bad in this low-scoring week. For the expensive forwards, Haaland 13, Watkins 13, the rest nothing. For the cheaper forwards, they scored nothing. For the goalkeepers, Raya is an excellent goalkeeper. This coming game week away to Man City is probably going to be Arsenal's toughest game of the season. But he's still absolutely fine. He's still very highly owned. He's worth playing. If you have to make a transfer this week for a goalkeeper, he's the keeper to probably get. If you're wildcarding, and it's unlikely you need to, but if you have to wildcard this week, again, he's probably the goalkeeper worth getting. Beckett is also a very good keeper. The downside of both of these is, of course, you can only have two outfield players from either of these clubs if you go with them. But these are probably the best two keepers in the system. Pickford will be good when Branthwaite's back. At the moment, he's just fun to watch. Martinez, short term, is probably going to be better than Pickford. But it's not. if you've got Pickford, it's not worth taking a hit to take, get Martinez or anyone else. Henderson's been disappointing, but he's here because he's popular. Ariola's another cheap one, four and a half. Flecken, four and a half. And then Ward, he's not going to play. He's just there as bench fodder. So if you had Raya, you may also want Ward because you're always going to play Raya. Trent is a very good defender. Seven million, but he's probably worth it. All the time he keeps getting at least 60 minutes, he's probably worth having if you can afford him and the rest of your team's not too bad with him. It's not worth having Trent if it means you've got a couple of very weak players. But in isolation, he's absolutely worth having only 7 million, in my opinion. White for Arsenal. So we've got three Arsenal defenders in the system that are quite popular. White's the most expensive and he doesn't seem to have been quite as attacking this season as last season. So if you want an Arsenal defender, if you're looking to buy one, I suggest one of the other two. But White's perfectly good. If you've got him, he's fine to keep until your wildcard. Virgil van Dijk, he's also good. He's not going to get as many attacking returns as Trent, but he's perfectly good, 6 million. Gvardiol, we still don't know Man City's first choice 11. At time of recording, the Champions League for Man City hasn't started yet. It starts within the hour, though. And Gvardiol is playing, and so is Lewis, Rico Lewis. So we don't know each weekend who's going to be playing, but hopefully after a few weeks we'll have a better idea. So Gvardiol's okay to keep at the moment, but I'd say don't go buying him because 
until we know he's always playing, he's not worth having. But if you've got him, he's fine to have. Saliba's not worth buying this week, but he's worth having. Gabriel, not worth buying this week, but he's worth having. Pedro Paro is fine to get this week. He's only 5.5, and if he stays fit and Spurs keep playing the way they do, he's fine to just play every single week. Doesn't matter who he's playing. Rarely going to get a clean sheet, probably, but he's always got a reasonable chance of an attacking return. For the cheaper defenders, Robinson of Fulham, 4.7, and I think for that price, he's all right. Probably won't get many clean sheets, but there's always a chance of getting an attacking return. Lewis for 4.7. If he ends up getting more than 60 minutes regularly, he's probably worth having because he's attacking. At the moment, he's a bit risky because we don't know for sure what Pep's preferred back line is. Conza for Aston Villa, cheap, may get some clean sheets sometimes, but they did let in two against Everton at home last weekend, so not great. Burn for Newcastle. He, at the time of putting this together, was the most popular Newcastle defender. Newcastle defensively, are a little bit leaky, but not awful. They may get slightly better. I wouldn't be going out my way to get in burn at the moment, though. Mikalenko's a bit dodgy. He's fine to sell until everything gets Branthwaite back. And at the time of recording, I've got no idea when that is. I can't find any concrete information about when Branthwaite's back. Everton are going to be quite leaky. But he's only 4.4, and that does give you a bit more money to spend elsewhere. Anderson... He's fine to move on. If you particularly want a Fulham defender, then Robinson's the one you should go for. But Anderson is okay. He will make their defence slightly better. And then Face and Howard Bellis, 4.1 and 4 million respectively. They're bench fodder. They're going to sit on your bench most times. If they need to come in because you've got a player injured unexpectedly, they're going to get you one or two points. Although this week, they both have a chance of a clean sheet because they're at home to Everton and home to Ipswich. Mo Salah, good player. If you've got him, congratulations. He should or could have a good week this week. I see online some people are selling Haaland to be able to afford Salah. I absolutely recommend you don't do that. Even if Salah outscores Haaland, you're going to be using a transfer. And worse than that, when you get Haaland back, which you should do, you're going to be probably losing some money on that deal. It's okay to sell players to get Salah, but I don't think you should be selling Haaland to get him. For example, Palmer and Son. So that's Chelsea and Spurs. We're currently seeing where the players are going to be playing, what their positions are like, how other players are fitting in around them. So for different reasons, we don't know how these two players are going to be. But if you've got one of those two, there you could sell to get in Salah and then get two million from elsewhere. Palmer and Son are both excellent players. Not quite sure they're worth their prices at the moment, but they may be. If you've got them, you don't have to sell them. If you've not got them, I'd say don't buy them at the moment. Saka, a very good player. Away to Man City, so may not get anything this game week, but the next three games after that, he is very good. So you could potentially go from Sun and Palmer to Salah this week and then Saka next week. But all this hokey-cokey stuff, you're running a risk that you're going to be using these transfers and you're not going to get the points. I think it's much better if you transfer on a player, think, and do I want that player for the next two or three weeks? If you're wildcarding in game week six, then it's fine to do something silly this game week because you're going to change your squad next week anyway. And then Fernandez, I think he's probably the best player at United. The next four fixtures are very nice. He can get an attacking return in any game. If I had Fernandez, I'd be perfectly happy to keep him. If I had Fernandez, I don't think I would sell him for Salah this week. I know a lot of people would disagree with me. I wouldn't do it. I think he's fine. For the mid-price midfielders, Luis Diaz. So with Liverpool playing in the Champions League, we don't yet know what the minutes are going to be. And there is competition for spaces. If he gets a good amount of minutes, then he's a very good player to have. But we don't know that is going to be the case. If you've got him, he's absolutely worth keeping. If you've not got him, I'd say he's probably not worth buying at the moment. The same with Diego Jota. If you've got them, it's fine to have. Don't bother bringing them in. Now, Bowen's nice. He's a similar price. He's 7.5 million and he ticks along. So he's going to get two points and three points and five, maybe the occasional 10. But over the course of the season, he's going to get, I would guess, 140, 150 points. So he's quite nice. 
So he's a nice set and forget, but he is moderately expensive for that. But he's a good solid player. Gordon, when Newcastle are on form, he's very good. When they're a bit below par, he's a little bit less lucky. The next game's away to Fulham, home to Man City, away to Everton. He may get something. If I could have Bowen or Gordon, personally at the moment, I'd probably go Bowen. If you've got Gordon, he's fine. If you want to sell him, that's fine as well. Embremo. So away to Spurs this week, he could get something. But after that, Brentford have a very nice run of fixtures. The only negative thing here is Visser, who plays for Brentford, is injured, could be out for a couple of months, which I think would probably make Embremo slightly worse. But he's still a very good player and he's worth having. And then Eze should be good. Um, he's very close to getting lots of points, but he's only actually got, I think, one goal so far this season. Eze is fine to have if you've got him. He's fine to keep hold of. If you want to move him on, you can, but he's fine to keep. For the cheapest midfielders, Garnacho is very good, and it's very frustrating for this game that he only seems to get a few minutes each game. If he starts starting every game week and getting a good number of points, then he's probably definitely worth having but at the moment because he's such a big minutes risk unfortunately he's probably not worth having but it's a shame if you want to get him that's fine he's just risky when it comes to the minutes and Kunku's a funny one and even though he scored last game week because with Chelsea we don't know who's playing and who the first choice is at least I don't it's okay to sell him I would say don't buy in Kunku at the moment if you want to sell him you can if you want to keep him that's fine but a bit like Garnacho, we don't know what the minutes are going to be. And obviously, the longer you're on the pitch, the more chance you've got of scoring points. Smith throw at 5.7. Now, he's only getting between 60 and 70 minutes a game, but he at least starts. And he's had, I think, two attacking returns in four games so far. At only 5.7, I think he's quite good. And he made the season on 120, 130 points. So for the price, I think he's pretty good. Semenyo, he seems to be a very good attacking player for Bournemouth. I've put him as good soon. If you need to get someone in now and you want to choose Semenyo, that's fine. They're away to Liverpool this week, so good chance of not getting any points. But after that, he's got a reasonable chance of getting some decent points in the next few games. So next week, he'll probably be down as a good player. I'm just putting him as good soon because if you want to buy him now because you've got some emergency, that you could do... For example, if you had um, Palmer and Son, and I don't suppose you have, but if you had those two, you could sell them and buy Salah and Semenyo, and that'd be completely reasonable. Morgan Rogers, So he's a points dodger at the moment. He's very close to getting lots of points, but he's not actually got any returns yet. Now, every now and then we get a player in the game who seems very, very close every game to getting points, but doesn't do it. He may end up being one of those. Or... It may be within the next few games he's going to go on the run and get lots of points. If you've got Rodgers, he's absolutely fine to keep. If you've not got him, personally, I think he's not worth buying at the moment. Winks, he's down here as bench fodder. He's only four and a half million. If he sits on your bench every week, that's fine. The point of him is he frees up money. So if you had Palmer and Nkunku, you could sell them for Salah and Winks. And Winks would just be on your bench. But if Winks has to play sometimes... He'd get you two points, and that's all right. Haaland, absolutely worth having, I think. Even though he's playing Arsenal, still got a reasonable chance of getting a goal. And even if he doesn't, that's fine. Away to Newcastle, maybe he won't score then. But he's so popular. If you don't have him and he scores points, it's going to really hurt your rank. So if it's possible to have him in your team, he's worth having. If you've not got him, but you've still got your wild card, then maybe play your wild card next game week and buy him then. If you've not got him, don't buy him this game week unless you're wildcarding. Watkins, he may be injured. He played in the Champions League yesterday. He's probably all right. There's pictures of him, I think, with ice on his foot. He's probably all right. If he's fit, he is a good player and he's worth having. So Isaac, he also went off at half-time injured. We don't know if he's playing this weekend or not. So I'd absolutely say don't buy him if you've not got him. If you've got him, he's fine to have and just hope he either plays 90 minutes or no minutes. Absolutely don't buy him though. And if you want to sell him to get somebody else, that's all right. So Havertz, good 
striker for Arsenal. Away to Man City this game week, so a reasonable chance of no return there. But the next few games after that are very nice. So you could do Isak to have it this game week if you wanted to. Next game week may be better. If you're not doing any transfers and you've got Isak, maybe getting Havertz this week's worth doing. And then Solanke, 7.5 for Tottenham. We can reasonably assume if he stays fit, he's going to get quite a lot of goals this week. And at 7.5 million, he's absolutely worth it. So he's a bit of a gamble because we don't know when he's going to start being good, but he probably is going to be good. For the forwards, the cheaper forwards. So Chris Wood's very good. As in, for 6.1 million, he's very good. He could well get maybe 12 to 16 goals this season. So you could play him every week. It doesn't matter who he's playing. And every two or three weeks, he could get you a goal. And you need to have some cheaper players in your squad. He's a right to do for that. Munez hasn't been getting the minutes. He's not been getting the points. If you've got him, he's completely sellable. Absolutely, I would say, don't go buying him. If you end up having to play him, that's okay. But you need to think of him as somebody you need to be moving on eventually. So Jao Pedro, he didn't play last game week because he was injured. Who had a slight knock rather when he was uh, playing for Brazil. The assumption is he is going to play this game week. If he does, he's absolutely worth having. After this game week, the games aren't quite so good. So probably not worth buying. But if you've got him, I'd say he's worth keeping. So Welbeck, I'd say don't buy him. Noxie's a bad player, but after this game week, Bryson's fixtures aren't so good. If you've got him well done, he's absolutely fine to have. He's worth playing this game week, but don't bring him in this week. And then Cannon on here. Any There's a number of 4 million forwards. They would just be bench fodder. They'd sit on your bench and they may not get any minutes the whole season. So he just represents a 4 million forward. So we're now going to look at the bench order. Start with the goalkeepers. This is my suggested bench order for the keepers that are in the system. You do whatever you like. This is just my suggestion based on how many points they're likely to get, how highly owned they are, and a few other factors that I throw in there. The first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting, is the one on your bench, which means the other one is the one you're playing. So Ward, almost certainly not gonna play. Flecken, away to Spurs, probably not gonna get a clean sheet. West Ham playing Chelsea, probably not a clean sheet. Palace playing United, probably not a clean sheet. Pickford at Leicester, definitely letting goals there, I think. So Martinez at home to Wolves. On the surface, you'd say, oh, there's a reasonable chance of a clean sheet there, but it's a derby. And derby games, doesn't matter who the better team is, it always lives itself out a bit. That could be a scrappy 2-3 or 3-3 game. Could be lots of bookings. He's a wind-up merchant. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch in that game. Might be a bit frightening having him, but I would play him over any of the other keepers on here. Then we've got Raya. Although he's away to Man City, he's very highly owned. He's probably got a better chance than any of these other keepers of a clean sheet this week. If you don't play Raya and put him on your bench, he's probably going to really hurt you when he gets some points. And then for this game week, if you've got Becker, I think he's the best keeper to play. Now for the remaining players, I'm going to whiz through all of them apart from six, who are the captain choices. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest, is position three on your bench. The next one, position two. The last one, position one. But as always, you do whatever you like. This is just my suggestion. So you've got a four million striker. He's a position three on your bench. After that, Mikolenko, Anderson, Byrne, Winks, Faust, Konsa, Howard Bellis, Munez, Robinson, Lewis... Cavardio, Semenyo, Nkunku, Garnacho, Smithrow, Rogers, Welbeck, Bowen, Gordon, White, Saliba, Gabriel. Now, if you've got two Arsenal people at the back, so two of these defenders or one of these defenders and Raya, I'd say it's fine to drop one of those Arsenal players further down the pecking order and play like Gordon instead. So if I had Saliba and Gabriel, I'd be fine to play... Gabriel and Gordon and maybe bench Saliba. But if I only had Gabriel or Saliba, I would play them before Gordon. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, Havertz, Fernandez, Virgil van Dijk, Wood, Eze, Mbuemo, Sun, Saka, Gio Pedro, who will hopefully play 90 minutes or nothing, 
Jago Jota, Luis Diaz, Pedro Porro and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Regarding the captaincy, I think a good choice for captain and the most popular captain choice is bound to be Salah. If you've got Salah and Haaland, then Salah is probably the safe person to choose for captaincy. Obviously, if you're bringing him in, you should be captaining him. But Haaland, I think, is still a very solid choice. Reasonable chance of getting something this game week. And sometimes Salah does blank. So either of those are fine, but Salah is probably the better choice. If you have neither of these or you want to go somewhere else, Watkins, assuming he's fit, is going to be fine. If Watkins is flagged when you're sorting your team out, probably don't give him the old mule hat, but he's all right. So Lanky could have a good game. Isaac, if he's fit, would be all right for a captaincy choice. Again, if he's flagged, don't choose him. And then maybe even Palmer could do something. But it's really about Salah and Haaland this game week. Hopefully you've got one of those. If not, then I'd say it's Watkins, Slank, or it's just the order here. If you've got none of these or you don't want to choose these, then any of the players I've just shown you who are currently green, I'd say just choose them. As for the background picture, something a bit different this game week. So there's somebody called FPL Raptor, and he started something recently called FPL Therapy. It's very good. And he did a YouTube thing, I think a podcast as well, early this game week. And he goes through and talks about the different games. But at the hour mark, he then starts talking about managing with sadness in life, as in disappointment. He starts talking about disappointment if your FPL game week goes bad. But then he extends it to other things in your life that maybe you can't control that are making you sad. So personally, I think it's a very good listen. So if I remember, I'll leave a link to that at the hour mark in the description below if I can. Just think it's it was a very I thought it was a very good video. Uh, so well done, Ross, for doing that. If you want to check it out, you can. He has got some, I see, negative comments online. But at least he went out there and he made the video. And I think he's... He's got a master's in psychology, sports psychology, I think he is. So it's, it's worth a listen. And there we have it. That's what happened in game week four. And my suggestion for the pop players in game week five, if you just pick from this lot, I really think you've got a good chance of finishing top five. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have fun this weekend. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>